Hi, and welcome to the next episode in our wonderful Skinny Jeans program. In this program, we're sharing how to use EFT, tapping, and a variety of really great scientifically proven tools for maintaining and achieving your ideal weight and ideal body. I am so thrilled today, genuinely delighted to have as our guest Jessica Ortner. You probably have run into Jessica Ortner as the host of the Tapping World Summit and as one of the interviewers on the Tapping Solution movie. This movie has inspired hundreds of thousands of people to try tapping and right now we have over half a million people, think about it, one half million people all in the same place at the Tapping World Summit. So um, we just totally, I mean, I'm one of the people who just wildly enthusiastically supports the Ortners and the Tapping World Summit. And it's, it's such a delight, Jessica, to have you sharing your experiences today on the Skinny Jeans program. I want to thank you so much for having me, Dawson, and for all your support, really. Mm, it's a joy. It's a joy to just work together to, to bring this wonderful, simple, easy technique to millions of people. Absolutely. So share with us, Jessica, a little bit about your personal journey as discovering EFT and applying EFT in your life. Absolutely. So like everybody, I think we all have a tapping story. And mine is like many others where I came across tapping when I was sick. And I thought it was weird and I wasn't really open to it. Right. And my brother uh, came over to my house because I had the flu and I just couldn't get better. And so we started tapping while focusing on the symptoms. And what happens, as you know, with tapping is oftentimes it connects you to a deeper feeling. Yes. So, you know, it's, it's beneficial to ask yourself questions to get there. But sometimes just by stimulating the points, you naturally go to that deeper place. And before I knew it, tears were streaming down my face. Mm. And I said, I don't want to get better. Mm. Why, why would you say that? Why wouldn't you want to get better? And it wasn't like this was a conscious choice, but I was so tired and frustrated with where I was in my life. And I felt so lost, but I felt like I was trying so hard. And I think a lot of people, this is a great topic for weight loss because so many of us feel like we're trying so hard. And we almost sometimes almost have those tears of just frustration. And I was really at that point with my whole life. And so I started tapping, focusing on how I felt like things were never going to take off and I was never going to have a job I loved and feeling stuck. And I really felt a shift within my core. And that was just the beginning. Then I forgot about it. Then so I just, like, to just break in there for a second, Jessica, too. I, I don't see you as a person with a lot of resistance. Some people, like, they're just so clean to their issues that it's hard to pry them loose that I would, I would, I would guess you're much more of a, of a fast shifter. I think I am. I'm yeah. just, you know, even if someone wants to work with me, I'm op I'm really feel like always open to change and and evolve and I think people that are attracted to this work or who commit to programs like this are people that are like that too because yes. we learn the hard way but holding on is a lot harder than letting go. It's a lot more painful in the long run. Yes. So, um, but it takes that level of trust because yes. when you let go of a problem, you don't know what else is going to happen. You're going into the unknown and it's that uncertainty that I think we hold on to because we know our problems so well. We become <laughs> friends with our problems. It's what we know. So we don't know what's it, what we're going to be like without it. Yeah. But, and often our self-concept is just tied up in those problems. Um, absolutely. And, yeah. And so yeah. letting go of the problem means letting go of a part of yourself. Yeah, definitely. And, but I was in a place where I was so exhausted. I was just like, take it all, like whatever, help me. Like I, I was really in a desperate pl place mm. and that was a really great experience. And then I forgot, I used it and then I forgot about it. And then, okay. you know, we learned something and then I went on to my life and something else happened. And I remembered, oh, there's this weird tapping thing. Let me try it. And I started tapping. And at the same time, my brother Nick was tapping a lot and using it with friends and family. And uh, we started having these discussions about how amazing it works and how we wouldn't believe if someone told us how effective it was, we wouldn't have believed it unless we experienced it ourselves. And at that time, nobody had made a film about it. So we thought, what if, you know, if we can't make everybody do it, what if we make a film where we show people, we're not just telling people, we're showing people how to do this and the results. So we're taking 10 people, real life people, and we're bringing them through the process. And so it, you know, it was a long journey. We had 
no um, film experience, no outside funding. We bought the film equipment on credit cards and we started filming the movie. And then since then, we've just been really passionate to find innovative ways to spread this information. That's great. And it's wonderful that you've had such success that of course led to the Tapping World Summit and then more and more people participating and then getting into this whole collaborative marketing model. And it's just so striking to me. I was talking to your brother Nick earlier this week about how the old model of marketing is competition. You know, yeah. uh, we will compete with each other, but your whole model and the whole model we have at Skinny Jeans at EFT Universe is exactly the opposite. We all succeed by collaborating and working with each other, and that's how we, we support each other's success. And it's because we all want the same thing, which is yeah. to help people to get the yes. word out. Yes. Yeah, that's just great. So how did you go from that point to it occurring to you that it might be useful for losing weight or for any of the issues around body image and weight? Well, my confession to you is I did not start using it right away. It was actually after the film was over, after I'd been doing a Tapping World Summit, that I decided to use it for weight loss. And someone might think, well, you know, because because my issue was I um, have had problems with my body since puberty. Like, I don't remember, I, I couldn't, bef you know, at that time remember a time where I ever was happy in my body. And there's really sad statistics, like 53% of American girls at the age of 13 say that they're unhappy with their bodies. And by the time they turn 17, that statistic goes up to 78%. So wow. Wow of women wow. feel unhappy in their body. And so I definitely was one of those women, I was one of those people who always seemed to be fluctuating and gaining weight. And um, and we were joking before the call, I actually did so much tap, I had to do a lot of tapping on the times people had called me fat, that once I did the tapping, I began to forget the time, so I wrote them down in my phone, in my phone as, a, as a note. I mean, I had, um, you know, I had a boy poke my stomach once and say, look at that spare tire. I had someone say, you'd be really cute if you were skinnier. Um, you know, you know, just like m multiple things. And so I was really had, I was re really self-conscious, but I was holding it to myself. I didn't, people didn't know that I had this internal struggle. Yes. And we talked before about resistance. And I think that weight loss in my body seemed like such a massive problem um, that to me at that time, I just wanted to try to ignore it than to face it because it felt too big and it felt so, it felt like it was cemented. It felt mm. like such a part of who I was and I'd been struggling with for so long and I've tried so many different diets and so many different things. I almost didn't want to do tapping because I was scared it, it was going to be another thing that didn't work. Okay. And so here I am, the tapping person. I'm using tapping <laughs> for everything. <laughs> I'm not tapping on this, on this challenge. Right. And so... Um, I finally decided to stop dieting and to just start tapping five minutes a day and to okay. really start focusing on my own emotions. And it was really tough. You know, it was a journey. Like I had to make sure to tap every day and it was a lot of different emotions. And uh, I lost 10 pounds doing that without doing any dieting. Like ob obviously I was eating healthier because I was doing the work because I didn't have the need to eat my emotions, which I became a complete, I mean, if there was a professional emotional eater, I would definitely, <laughs> uh, I was very good at it. And, and the thing about food yeah. is what's, what's crazy about it is that we eat our emotions. So we get upset and we feel like we have the food and we know that it's bad for us, but at some level we feel like we're taking care of ourselves because we're giving ourselves a moment to go within yes. and to, to eat something and it feels nurturing, it feels comforting. And so the irony is it's not like this blatant thing that seems like, oh, we're doing something really awful because it feels like we're doing something good because it feels so good. Yes. And so it's, it's really addressing that. That's the biggest thing that I had to address is I was using food when I felt like life was speeding, like life was going too fast and I needed to slow down or I needed to comfort myself. That was the place that, that I would go. And, um, and you know, once you start doing that, you get addicted to, to sugar Bio, biochemically. If you are eating a lot of sugar, pe most people that eat a lot of sh sugar tend to have candida and that again, spikes cravings for sugar. Yes. So I have to tell you the 
I felt like I was withdrawing from a drug when I was doing the tapping because I decided for two months not to have any sugar, um, processed sugar and fruit. It wasn't so much about the diet part. It was because I knew it was an addiction. And so I felt like I needed to cut it out and then begin to incorporate it into a healthy way because I was doing it in a very unhealthy way. So I cut sugar out. And, um, and this, was, this was after I lost a 10 pounds. This is after I did the initial tapping. I just felt like I needed to do that. And Dawson, I felt like I was withdrawing from a drug. And, um, and it how, was how, how was it in your body? When you say it felt like withdrawing from a drug, how did it feel it was, inside your body? I was getting body? headaches. I was feeling shaky. Oh, I was okay. goofy. Right. Um, I physically felt like I needed this drug. And then I was, wow. having, I was having withdrawal symptoms when I, when I cut out sugar. And some people try to cut out sugar for a day and they feel like that, hmm. uh, you know, or, or these bad foods because we've, we have the emotional aspect and then we have the, um, you know, the physical addiction. And to me, the emotional aspect is bigger than the physical addiction. You can't address the physical, you won't have the strength because there is some willpower evolved, involved. Like you're going to tap and it's going to help with cravings. Yes. But still, you can't tap all the time when you're on the street and you have that donut. So for me, what I find more effective is to fully focus on emotions. And the advice I give to people is don't worry about the diet at first. You definitely want to think about your diet, but just work on the emotions because you'll find um, that'll change. I was having, uh, I had a lunch with a friend of mine. Her name's Tara Stiles, and she has a New York Times bestseller. She's the spokeswoman for Reebok, and she's a, she owns a yoga studio, so she's a yogi. And she used to be a Ford's model. So she is in incredible shape and she teaches other people how to, you know, create beautiful bodies. People go to her. And I said to her, I was like, Tara, what's one thing? Like, what's one food or one exercise or what's, what's a yoga move? This is what I actually said. I was like, what's right. a yoga move that helps with weight loss? And she goes, honestly, it's not about the move or the exercise. It's about the mental state. If you just wake up and do something that's calming, like tapping or you know sitting in a yoga pose, that's going to help you lose weight more than the actual exercise. And I'm hearing that more and more, and I'm seeing the results. And it goes against what I think we are taught. Um, but I think it all starts with our emotions, and then we look at the exercise and our eating. Hmm, that's, that's absolutely true, because if we follow the old model of using willpower, depriving ourselves, then suddenly this whole exercise of losing weight or um, becoming healthier is in, entwined with the whole idea of deprivation and loss. So now I'm having to fight one part of myself, fighting another part of myself, and we have a whole, whole segment actually on that. We call it the top dog underdog dynamic, and it never works psychologically when one party, the top dog, is trying to force another part of you, the underdog, to toe the line, to do it at once. And so you have this terrible psychological struggle going on, uh, that doesn't work. Your 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 dieting is is looks like something you're depriving yourself of. You have to say no to these things, and so you get to associate weight loss with um, having a bad time, which is yeah. the yeah. totally the wrong it's message like to give yourself. Emo emotional eating, happy like you're yes. having time for yourself, you're comforting. Going to the gym feels like pain. It feels yes. like a struggle. And what I always what I always do is anytime I want to incorporate a new habit. I, tr I talk to people who've already incorporated it. And when I talk to people who have, are consistent with going to the gym, they love it. Yes. They, it's the, they love it. It is their stress relief. I was talking to a girlfriend yesterday who's in, in amazing shape, and she said to me, you know, I do cardio five days a week, but not because I feel like I need to lose weight, but because I need it for stress relief because it makes me feel so good. Yes. It's her drug. And so in order to be consistent with any type of lifestyle change, you have to find some enjoyment. And well, let me, let me yeah. back up one, one second there. That's a wonderful story that she does because she, she, she loves it, she enjoys it. And um, I know when I began going to the gym first, I, my early exercise programs were that the same kind of struggle mentality. It's like, oh, I go to the gym and I push myself and force myself. And then I've been into the gym now for a few years and, 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 and I love it now. But the shift was... When I said, I'll go to the gym, I'll begin working out, and the moment it feels bad, I'll quit. And before I'd go to the gym, I'd start to get my stress my body, and I'd push on through, and I'd really keep on going. And so I'd be su super sore the next day. Maybe I'd pull a, 
a ligament or something like that and have to recover for a while. But with my new approach, I would just go, I would do it while it felt good. The moment it felt bad, I'd quit and walk away. So my body began to associate being in the gym with pleasure. <laughs> Definitely. You know, and, and another, if we're going to get practical, another tip, um, two different tips, is I am a big reader. So right. I will read like historic novels. Like I love them. And so I will bring the book and get on the bike. And I can only read that book, even if it's like a trashy novel or, you know, that gossip magazine that you feel guilty reading, <laughs> read it at the gym. Like allow yourself to be like, okay, I, I can read this if I'm at the gym. Or, and so if you read, ah, Hunger Games, okay. right. you know, start reading Hunger Games or like something really addictive and say, I'm not allowed to read it unless I'm on the bike reading it. And you're always there. The other thing too is um, I do it with reading another girlfriend of mine. Uh, she does it with shows. So she'll download a show onto her phone or bring out an iPad and she can only watch episodes to that show if she's at the gym. And so you get really addicted and before you know it, you really want to go to the gym because you're working out and you get, <laughs> get the experience and watch this show. So those are two you know, practical tips that I found to be really helpful. Yeah. And of course, you can play around with, with these, these uh, sorts of methods and find ones that work for you. Because some things will work well for you, other things will work well for other people. Like if you're uh, a verbal person or uh, a word-oriented person, the book works for you. For her, the, 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 um, the, the, the visual works for her. She watches TV shows. For me, when I'm on any kind of a, a machine, I just I meditate. I just space out and meditate. And I don't want to see anything in front of my eyes. I just go yeah. in this all, See, all this I state. can't do that. If I try to do that, I start going, I hate this. I hate yeah. this. Wait, wait, quiet, quiet. I hate this. I hate this. <laughs> so, like, I battle, my, I battle my own mind. I can't meditate when I'm working out. Yeah, yeah. So, so people, you just experiment. Play with these ideas. Yes. And find ones that work for you. That's why this would know one size fits all solution over here. You just try different things. And you know, try this. If it doesn't work for you, drop it. If it worked for Mariel Hemingway, it doesn't mean it'll work for you, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, yeah, yeah. Play around and, and, and treat this as play, treat this as joy, treat this as pleasure, treat this as an adventure, not as some kind of deathly slug. Yes, exactly. But again, what I said, bigger than the exercise and the going to the gym is to, to work on your emotions, is yes. to spend those. And it could be five or ten minutes. For me, it's in the morning because I had the habit of waking up and looking at myself in the mirror first thing in the morning and, and criticizing myself right away. Mm. Without even it, – it wasn't even a conscious shot. shot like, uh, sorry, a conscious thought. I just have a big mirror in my bathroom and I would just, you know, kind of like look at every angle, criticize it, go, oh, and then, you know, go on with my day. And Just that's, without, ter that's terrible. You're so beautiful. And to think, I mean, it just breaks my heart to think of you saying they're criticizing you. I just want to, what makes me want to cry, you know? It's like, how could someone as wonderful and inspirational as you possibly think badly of herself? Uh, you know, I, and I think it goes down to um, things that you learn as a child and things that you were told. And a lot of, I think there's a lot more pressure with, um, with women, to be honest. Like, I don't mean to do the sexist card, but I think people are more likely to comment on how a woman looks than comment on how a man looks. Right. And so, you know, ironically, even when a woman is told she's beautiful sometimes, but the man next to her who's doing the same job isn't, the woman's like, well, I keep being validated by my looks. Like, what people are focusing on is how I look like. So I look good today, but what if I don't look good tomorrow? Right. You know, right. what if in 10 years I look older? Oh, gosh. Right. Like, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to have the same value because we're taught that the way that we look um, is you equal know, to value. Yeah. I, I remember once I had a shocking experience with EFT. I was doing a, a show in, uh, in L.A., and the host said to me, you know, I have an actress friend that lives in Hollywood. I'd love you to work with her. And um, so I went over to this actress's house. And this, is, this, is a, this is like a world-famous actress. And um, I, we talked for a while. I began the EFT session with her. And um, I was kind of you know, starstruck at first working with this, this really, really gorgeous woman. And um, we began to tap. And I said, okay, now say even though blah, 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 I deeply and completely accept myself. And this woman broke down in tears and she could not say, I deeply and completely accept myself. This woman has fan clubs. This woman has movie buffs writing about her. This woman has all this adulation from other people. 
And yet her issue was self-acceptance. She could not accept herself. She was so self-critical. Despite all, so all the love, all the acceptance, all the, the worship from other people couldn't fill that internal hole of I don't feel good enough. And it's it just astonishing that even celebrities... And it creates, it creates pressure. It creates yeah. pressure because the eyes are on you. So you think if you do something wrong... Um, you know, I'm, again, look, we said I'm beautiful today, but what about not tomorrow? Or I'm yes. not, I'm not beautiful enough, so I'm not gonna do something. One of the biggest things that I had to do was I kept putting off things that I wanted to do because I didn't feel pretty enough, or I didn't feel like I had lost enough weight. So my mantra was always, "I'll do it when." Okay. I'll do it when I lose weight. And I think a lot of women they stop themselves from living. They'll go, okay, I'll go on that date when I lose weight, right? Or I'll or I'll do that video interview when I lose weight. All these different things, and uh, the irony of it is that you're stopping yourself is contributing to your weight gain. And so, if you, what I found is when I just th said, you know what, I'm just gonna be out there. I'm gonna be me. I'm gonna stand in my power, the way that I look, the way that I am. I found that that's when my body started responding and I started getting into better shape. It's almost like I had to do, it was the opposite. I thought I had to lose weight and then do something, but I had to do that thing and then the body changed. Absolutely. And, and um, the great client-centered therapist, Carl Rogers in the 50s, he said that the paradox of growth is that it has to start with self-acceptance. You have to start by accepting where you are right now as you are. And that's the first step to being somewhere else. But you don't get to be somewhere else in the personal growth journey by picturing and mentally placing yourself in that other place, you first accept yourself where you are. And I know for my, my personal weight loss journey with EFT, I would do the same thing. I, I'd stand in front of the mirror, the critical voices would come up, and I'd say, I love my body just the way it is. I'd say that to myself, I'd tap, I'd look at the mirror, I'd smile at myself, I'd say, I love you. <laughs> and so you know, you start, you start accepting yourself and suddenly all those internal conflicts, all those internal dynamics of, um, of fight, of conflict start to shift. So that was that, that is so, so powerful to, to do that kind of a step. Yeah, and what's also interesting is another big aha moment that I had on this journey was I thought that by stressing about my weight, I was at least on top of it, that I was at least making progress. You know, if I'm stressing about it, I'm thinking about it, something's gonna eventually change. And I was really shocked when I learned that when you're feeling stress, it creates the hormone, you know, an overproduction of cortisol, yes. which, which then contributes to weight gain, especially around your stomach. And so that, you know, an overproduction of cortisol and stress is the weight, it's, it's a weight gain drug. We are, as we are stressing over our bodies and stressing over our diets or stressing over whether we should go to the gym or whether we should eat this cupcake, that stress is contributing to our weight gain. And that to me was a big aha moment because I never thought of it like that. That really me thinking that I'm being proactive in my weight by stressing about it was actually contributing to that weight gain. Not only that, but people can sometimes use the opinions of others as a way of trying to control their weight. I know I had one uh, friend who said to me, you never criticize or comment on, on, the, on the fact that I'm overweight. And, uh, she said, I, I kind of count on other people criticizing me to keep myself in line. And uh, so, she, you know, she's actually, not only is she, what are you, her internal critic to keep her in line, she expects other people's criticism to keep her in line. And that's just, yeah, such a, yeah. a sad a sad thing to, to, to do, is to, is to even to just be looking for criticism for the people, yeah. people saying things about you. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I was the opposite. So I had a lot of people comment on my body. Well, a lot of people. I had five people in my life. Um, make a make a comment on my body and in, and that didn't motivate me I mean I remember once it was a mentor I was studying um, hypnosis and NLP and it was actually a mentor of mine and he was like you know you're fat right I was 20 years old he's like you know you're fat right like you should do something about it and I and I you know again and I wasn't huge you know I was probably 15 pounds heavier than I am now like it wasn't anything major but he I think in his mind he felt like if he said that it would kind of shake me up enough yes, to start right. getting in better shape. I don't function like that. My reaction to that was, excuse my language, but F you, I'll use the letters. Um, I'm not going to because then you win. 
Because if I feel all this pressure from society to look a certain way, then it's a, it's this weird thing because you feel the pressure from society to look a certain way. Yes. The part of you wants to rebel because you know it's unfair, you know it's wrong, and you don't want to feed into that. But on the other side, you want to be accepted, and you want to feel like you're being the best. And so it's this this dynamic. So I was always fighting between um, getting in shape and also rebelling against the pressure I felt from society to look a certain way. Yes. Yeah. Again, conflict, stress. Yes, exactly. Cortisol. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Wanting to eat that cupcake and be like, I don't care what anyone else thinks. Yeah. I'll I show you. Was, I thought it was me taking a stance for myself. That's the irony of it. Again, a lot of times we eat bad things. Right. We, we emotionally eat and we almost think like, well, I'm taking the stance for myself. I'm doing this because I want to and I'm not going to let other people pressure me to look a certain way. Or I'm going to do this because I've worked really hard and I deserve it. Um, we put that the junk food has been, uh, you know, anchored to us. It's been wired in our brains to be a reward. And so that's what needs to change. But no, that's not really a reward. That's something that's slowly killing you and right. making you miserable. Right. So it's reassociating um, yourself to that food and knowing that it feels good in the moment, but it's not. And I, I always, you know, and I started referring to it as, it's it's a drug. Your food is a drug. So just like people are addicted to cocaine, if you are always thinking about food and you're eating, you have an addiction to food and to eat quickly and what happens in the chemical reaction you get in your body, the same way as some, how your body changes when you take a drug. So by almost admitting to myself, I'm a drug addict, you know, like, I, <laughs> this is a drug, like, I, this is an addiction, I'm going to treat this like an addiction, I'm going to be compassionate to myself, huh. but I'm going to admit, the first step, yes. really, of any program is saying that you're addicted and that you have a problem, and so, for me, I just had to say, like, I'm addicted to food, to, you know, to overeating, and, um, and that really, that really uh, made a big difference. Hmm. Yeah, it's the first step in any 12-step program is saying, I have a problem. Yeah. 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 Until you, if you have a problem, you, by definition, can't seek a solution. If you're in denial of a problem, then you yeah. won't seek a solution. But that that first step of saying I have a problem, and then um, so somebody somebody says says I have a problem, and obviously if, if people are 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 involved in this 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 weight loss program, skinny jeans, it, we they are they are uh, taking that first step, and then they're taking some some clear action, and they're also recognizing that. It's not about the diet. It's not about the exercise. It's about the emotions, and they're they're realizing that their emotions give them tremendous leverage. When, once you end these internal war, wars, these internal struggles, these internal conflicts, these internal uh, pieces of self-talk that are 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 fighting against each other. Once you end that whole internal struggle, that internal material, and you take, for example, the incidents that you have as you had as a child, you had in college, uh, people saying things and doing things that shaped you, that, that you've now internalized, you have these internal critics, they were, internal, they were external critics when you were two or three or four or five years old, now they're internal critics and they're, they're jabbering away there in your head. Once you've taken all those and neutralized them with EFT, then you can find your body, you can start to feel your body, you can start to feel your feelings, you can start to not be afraid of this whole aspect of life. Uh, this just makes an enormous difference to your ability to, to tackle your issues. Absolutely. And and I think as we're finding the clear, that type of clarity uh, and to do the tapping, one of the best things that we can do is begin to start asking ourselves some questions. Because... I don't think a lot of us are really conscious about why we're doing certain things. And so there is, um, you know, if, if you feel suddenly like you not eating all that food makes you feel deprived, where, where else in your life do you feel deprived? Yes, right. Uh, you know, what's going on when you're, what's the emotion? What time of day are you eating? Are you eating really yes. late at night? Is it usually, you know, what type of thoughts are you having? When did the weight gain start? A lot of times there was some event um, that happened. Another great question is, what's the downside of losing the weight? Well, if I lose all the weight, then I have the pressure of keeping it off. Yes. If I lose all the weight, then everyone's going to comment on how my body looks, and I don't really want the extra attention. Yes. Yes. All those, those secondary gains from not losing the weight, so that, that secondary gain that is the, the upside of the downside. There's the downside of being overweight. But there's the upside of being overweight as well. So uh... also, I mentioned before that that I will when syndrome. So I will do this when I yes. lose the weight. 
And that can also double as a secondary gain because someone might say, ah. well, start the business when I lose the weight right. because I'm going to have to be having meetings. Right. But there's a fear around the business. And so they keep on the weight because they're scared that if they lose the weight, they'll no longer have an excuse right. for not doing something that scares them. Yes. Yeah. So keep holding the weight is their way of, of not getting into that, that bind of having to prove themselves. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, be successful. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's um, let's do some tapping on some of these common themes. Just just let's do it do it freely. And so, if you're watching this program now with Jessica and me, as uh, as as she speaks, as I speak, um, I'll I'll be the client. Jessica, I'll I'll tap along with you. I'll repeat the words, and um, you have the instructions elsewhere in the program. You can pull up those sheets sheets to see the, the points. Or just just tap along close to where they where you see us tapping, um, but let's just run through some of the, these these common issues, these common common conflicts, Absolutely. these common body image limitations, and so on, and just do some free form tapping around all of that. Okay, I think what I'd like to do is focusing on the I w I will when so just okay. putting off living our lives because we think we can't truly Good. live till Super. we lock the okay. okay, so side of the hand. Even though I can't start this new project. Even though I can't start this new project. Until I lose this weight. Until I lose this weight. I love and accept myself. I love and accept myself. Even though I can't do that thing. Even though I can't do that thing. Until, uh, unless I lose this weight. Unless I lose this weight. I love and accept myself. I love and accept myself. Even though I'll try that new thing. Even though I'll try that new thing. When I lose the weight. When I lose that the weight, and not until then. But not until then. I love and accept myself. I love and accept myself. Eyebrow point. I can't try something new. I can't try something new. Side of the eye. I have to hold myself back. I have to hold myself back. I have to play small. I have to play small. Because I have all this weight. Because I have all this weight. And this weight is a jail. And this weight is a jail. And it keeps me small. And it keeps me small. I can't try new things. I can't try new things. Because of this weight. Because of this weight. Because of this weight. Because of this weight. I hold myself back. I hold myself back. I play small. I play small. Because I can't do this new thing. Because I can't do this new thing. Unless I lose weight. Unless I lose weight. Collarbone, is that really true? Is that really true? Under the arm, beginning to question these beliefs. Beginning to question these beliefs. But it feels true. But it feels true. Other people are thinner. Other people are thinner. And they're doing that thing. And they're doing that thing. So that must mean that I have to be thinner. So that must mean that I have to be thinner. Or is this, or am I just guessing? Or am I just guessing? Is this really true? Is this really true? I have to play small. I have to play small. Because I feel so big. Because I feel so big. Wow. I have to play small. I have to play small. Eyebrow point. Because I feel so big. Because I feel so big. Side of the eye. But what if I could feel big inside? But what if I could feel big inside? What if big was powerful? What if big was powerful? What if I was powerful now? What if I was powerful now? And I stepped up now. And I stepped up now. Maybe my body would change. Maybe my body would change. Under the arm. Maybe it's not about my body. Maybe it's not about my body. Maybe it's about my heart. Maybe it's about my heart. Maybe it's about my worth. Maybe it's about my work. Worth? Maybe it's a worth. Worth. Yeah. Okay, my worth. Maybe it's about what I deserve. Maybe it's about what I deserve. Maybe it's not about my body. Maybe it's not about my body. Because I am more powerful than my body. Because I am more powerful than my body. Oprah has to play small. Oprah. <laughs> Oprah has to play small. Every time she felt big. Every time she felt big. I'm not sure that's true. I'm not sure that's true. 
So it doesn't have to be true for me. So it doesn't have to be true for me. I don't need to weigh less. I don't need to weigh less. Side of the I to live more. To live more. I love that. Can you say that again? I don't need to weigh less. I don't need to weigh less. To live more. To live more. I don't need to weigh less to live more. I love that one, Jessica. I can live more now. I can live more now. Just the way I am. Just the way I am. I can play big. I can play big. Just the way that I am. Just the way that I am. It's safe for me to step up. It's safe for me to step up. And live more. And live more. Without weighing less. Without weighing less. Okay, take a deep breath in. Oh, that felt so good. <laughs> my legs were like tingling. I felt like something was releasing in my body. I'm not even sure what, but but it's like my left leg's tingling, my left side's tingling. Uh, something was shifting me in some way as I followed along. It was almost hypnotic for me following along with you there. Yeah, thank you. No, it's some important concepts. You know, this feeling that I have to play small because I feel yes. big. And, and feeling like our outside body is this jail when it's really just this illusion. It's in our own minds. People don't see it. And there's so many people out there that do weigh a lot and are doing amazing things and right. they're giving their gift to the world. And then if you want to lose weight because you want to be healthy, then you do it because you want to do it. But your value and what you have to give to this world has nothing, there's no relationship between that and how much you weigh and what's on the scale. Let's None. tap and say that. There's, let's tap and say, say that as an affirmation. Okay, so let's go right to the, to the eyebrow. Okay. There's, there's, no, there's no relationship. There's no relationship. Between the number on the scale. Between the number on the scale. And the value I have to give. And the value I have to give. My body. My body. Chin is just my body. Is just my body. It doesn't reflect my total value. It doesn't reflect my total value. I am bigger than my body. I am bigger than my body. My body is just the vessel. My body is just the vessel. For me to spread my message. For me to spread my message. My body my body doesn't reflect my value doesn't reflect my value I reflect my value I reflect my value the number on the scale the number on the scale is just a number on the scale is just a number on the scale it has no meaning on my life it has no meaning in my life or on the amount of value I have or on the amount of value I have because I am valuable because I am valuable Regardless of the number. Regardless of the number. Okay, take a deep breath in. You know, Dawson, if, if there is one thing that people took away from this is to not stop living your life because of your body or because of your weight, to not stop yourself from going for a goal because of the you know because of the way that you think that you look because once we start going for those goals just the way that we are again your body will respond and it's not even about that i mean this isn't the reason we want to live lose weight is not because we want to have a cuter butt or stomach the reason we want to lose weight is because we think it's going to make us feel better about ourselves it's because we want to lose weight because we think we're going to feel better. And so why don't we feel better first <laughs> instead of waiting? Why don't we feel good now about ourselves right? and then let our body reflect that? And then we can look at our body more logically. Then we don't have the same emotions and we can go, okay, I'm going to eat healthy foods. I'm going to stay away from processed foods. I'm going to start going to the gym or just start walking outside. You can start doing those things easily because you're not continuously – beating up your body and stressing over the way that you look um, because you think you can't live until you lose this weight or you feel like you can't be happy until you lose this weight. And people find it. People get happy. I mean, how many times, I can't tell you how many times my girlfriends have gotten into like a great relationship and then they lose a bunch of weight and people are like, you look great. 
what is it? And it's love. It's feeling good. Right. And or it, not even a relationship, but something goes good in your life and you just start noticing that you're losing weight and you didn't even intentionally try. It happens all the time because happiness will will help you lose the weight. It will, you know, your body will begin to reflect that positive state. So again, the biggest thing that I want people to take away from this is don't think that you need to weigh less to live more. Don't think that you need to look a certain way to go for that dream. Start living now and then your body will just catch up with you. Yeah, there's actually quite a bit of research showing that when people are in love, they lose weight because what's happening is that the pleasure receptors in the brain are being filled up by the neurotransmitters that tell us that we're in a state of well-being. And so we aren't looking out to ourselves for food to do that. And um, once we have that hormonal shift in our brains, that shift in our brains, then we're getting that signal from our, our love relationship that all is well and doesn't come from the, the outside from, from food in the same way anymore and eat less. Same thing is true for meditation. If you're in love with God, in love with life, in love with the universe, um, all of those pleasure opioids that are, are skittering around your, your nervous system and your, your brain, they're telling you, hey, I'm, 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 I'm really doing well. And then we, we're less likely to have to look outside of ourselves. So what you're saying is scientifically valid, actually, that, uh, that, that the, these kinds of practices um, really help us to, to naturally eat the right things. Absolutely, yes. So to, to wrap up, Jessica, just for you personally, um, talk about what you do in your own personal self-care routine. Obviously, you do EFT. Uh, obviously, you've begun ex exercising. You talk about walking outside. Uh, what are some of the things in a typical week you would that, where your week would not be complete without those items? Okay, so it's a few things, and, and it sometimes varies depending on if I'm traveling a lot because I tend to travel. Right. Um, but... I, you know, for this, for example, this morning I woke up, I sat on the couch, I meditated and it's not meditating for an hour. It's meditating for two minutes, five right. minutes, just, you know, getting, getting centered. When I meditate, a lot of times that's when the thoughts start coming in of maybe the stress of what I have to do or right. something that's going on. And then I go into the, the tapping uh, and I do a few rounds of tapping. And then um, it, it depends on sometimes I have like a video that I just pop in in the morning and I'll do a, a quick workout in the morning, uh, just, you know, 30 minutes. Something that's really important to me is yoga. And, you know, it's one of those things where I don't even do it for the physical reasons. I do it for the mental reasons. I feel like I, you know, am walking out of a therapist's office after I go. I yes. just feel like I just process so many emotions and I feel so much so centered. So I try to do that at least once a week, usually twice a week. And, um, and then when it comes to doing a cardio, I just try to make it really fun. I either do a class or I go to the gym with a book. Um, I don't naturally, I'm not a runner. I don't naturally like to run. I don't naturally like to exercise really. It's more that I find ways that I like to do it, which okay. is either reading or doing a class. Yeah. And um, yeah, and just, you know, and just taking care of yourself. The other thing about, and I don't know if this is relevant for men, but I know with women, the whole self-care thing, when we start eating well, we, you know, we want to do it in a way of self-care. And another thing is when you know that you want to start getting healthier, go buy some nice makeup, go buy some cute exercise pants. As much as that sounds like not totally linear with, okay, this is going to help you lose weight, but the better that you can feel and the, and the more actions that you can take where you feel like you're nurturing yourself, um, the better it is. And ask Women around you that seem like they have a certain this area of their life together, what they're doing. Most of the tips that I do is because I saw someone and I thought, "You have great hair. How do you how do you do your hair right. in the morning? Your arms look great. What kind of exercises do you right. do?" You kind of look at the people around you because those are the people that don't you know they're not out there. Um, it's not a trainer who who this is their job and they have great arms. This is someone who has the regular job like you and you know, it finds a way to incorporate, you know, staying in shape into their busy lives. So I yes. think that people should get tips with programs like you, like this program, and then go out to your immediate environment and ask women uh, what they're doing and do whatever you can to feel beautiful in the moment. It's not about other people thinking you're beautiful, but you feeling like 
damn, I look good. Like, I got this new lipstick. I haven't lost a pound, but I love the color of this lipstick. It just makes you feel good. If you're doing as many things that make you feel, you know, feminine and alive and like you're, you know, make you feel beautiful in that moment. Yeah, I know that one of the mysterious things to me is pedicures. Uh, every, every woman I know just seems to rhapsodize about how wonderful a pedicure is. And I cannot see the... Um, the attraction of having somebody like clean up and paint your toenails just I mean, oh I, it's I, the best I, <laughs> I love it <laughs> i love it but you know even even if you can't go out like people who are on a budget and don't want to go spend money on things buying the cheap mud mask at cvs and at night putting a mud mask Maybe it helps your skin, but the act of just putting something yes. on your skin, the act of doing something that is going to make you feel more beautiful and that feels healthy, you yes. know, like a healthy mud mask, just helps with your emotions, with you starting to feel more confident, with you learning how to take care of yourself and, you know, and, and knowing how good that, that feels. Yes. Yeah, that, that, that's, that is so important. Also, if you do ask friends what they're doing, then that means you're looking for role models. And modeling yes. is so important. The way we learn behaviors. I was sitting, I went camping this last weekend and was sitting by the side of a lake watching a family of ducks. And um, the little ducklings, there were three little ducklings behind the mother duck and they look at what the, what the mother duck was doing and they do the same thing. And they look, look at what, uh, what plant she was eating on the side and they eat the same plant. That's how we learn. We learn by modeling what we what we see modeled modeled around us. So right. find people that are good models. Find people who have yes. good emotional health. And um, if 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 they if they'll tolerate you being around, hang around them and adopt some I'm of gonna, their habits. This is, this is a confession. So I have my friend Sarah, who is um, this vegan triathlon, amazing shape, um, and you know she she has a regular job. This is just her passion. And so right. we're really good friends. And I'm always like Sarah. I need like, I need that partner to help me going. So this morning, like this morning, I have my phone here. I texted her right. because it was 8.45. And I usually wake up around 6.30 or 7. But I'd slept, you know, I'd slept longer. It was 8.45. And I said, I texted her, Sarah, confession. I'm still in bed. I have an interview at 1 o'clock. And, um, and I have to work. But, and I have to go work out. But I'm feeling so unmotivated. This, I have it right here. And she and I said so. Then I wrote verbal ass kicking, please. Which <laughs> and she called me. Like usually she checks. She'll text me like, "Go to the gym. You can do it." But she just called me. You know, and I'm in bed, and I was like, "I'm really tired. I don't want to go to the gym." And <laughs> like, and she just goes, "Come on, let's let's do it. Do a workout video in your in your room." And I was right. like, "Okay, all right." And I did it, and it was fun. But having the girlfriend that you can joke around yes. with. We're, we're never perfect. Sometimes I'm totally motivated. I love it. But sometimes I have a morning like this morning that I'm lying in bed and I'm thinking the last thing I want to go do is do anything stressful on my body. Like I just want to lie here in bed. So have those people that you can just send a text message to yes. and be that friend to someone else. Yes. Say if it's really early in the morning and you want to go to the gym, but you just don't have the motivation, send me a text message and I'll send you a positive quote or a you can do it. Yes. And that really makes all the difference. And it's consistent. It's not It's not like I'm on this crazy, I'm still on a weight loss goal. I'm just trying to stay healthy. But it's nice to have someone that just keeps you consistent. Yeah, and supports your, your goals. Yeah, part of the Skinny Jeans program is we have people have a buddy. And you just tell your buddy where you are each week, what your goals are. Uh, if you missed your goals, you tell your buddy that you missed them. Uh, no criticism, no, no blame, no commentary, no coaching, no therapy, just sharing with another human being. And just that act of, of telling somebody where you are and making your journey one that you share with, with at least one other person really helps reinforce those goals and reinforce, reinforce your motivation. So you're doing that. You're, you're finding a buddy and uh, not necessarily doing everything she's doing, but um, helping her, her, her level of devotion to fitness is pulling you in a certain direction. So it's so important to find those friends who do that. And it may, may mean letting go of friends who uh, pull us the opposite direction, too. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. For sure. Jessica, it's been so fun and inspiring and wonderful to hear you share your story and share these great ideas. We've got so much 
fantastic material here to, to work on, and um, we'll do lots more tapping as well to help find those pieces of self-talk that, that hurt people, find those old memories that discourage them, find all those secondary gains that stop us from our goals, and we'll do, do tons more tapping. But this has been a great way to launch us into the process. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dawson. And I will see you at the next event of Tapping World Summit. Perfect. Bye now. Bye.